Hi guys, welcome back. I'm going to be doing a new Napoleonic tutorial for you this weekend. I have been really busy with the period myself recently because I'm doing the cover diorama for the next issue of War Game Soldiers and Strategy that's coming up, and that has a Napoleonic theme too. Uh, so I'm really in the period right now and I've had it on my mind a lot recently. Now what I'm going to be painting for you here has absolutely nothing to do with that cover diorama or its subject because I probably painted just about enough of that uh, particular unit. But it is one that I think a lot of people will find interesting and appreciate. Uh, you may even recognize this uniform, probably you do. This is a British Light Infantry Officer specifically from the 95th Rifles, which is of course famous from the whole Sharp book and TV series, and of course they have this really pretty dark green jacket and dark green black uniform, and that's what I'm going to be doing for you here. I'm also going to be giving him sort of these gray pants with leather uh, brown facings that they wore sometimes, so that should make him extra interesting. Uh, by the way, this figure is from War Games Foundry because they just have such a large selection of really nice character Full, characterful <laughs> um, Napoleonic sculpts. You may have noticed that I have base coated him in black and I normally use gray. The reason for that is this whole figure is going to be so dark. The uniform is really dark. Just, you know, everything about him is dark. So I can get away with that black base coat. I usually use the gray just because it's safer and if you're painting a figure with lots of light clothing or equipment, it's easier to do. But if you can get away with using a black base coat because of the colors, I really recommend you do so because it really adds to things. It gives the whole look of the figure something extra. The colors appear richer, fuller, deeper when you put them over black. So it's more trouble, but the results are quite interesting. If you want another example of that, you can check out my uh, Republican Roman tutorial. I'll link to that. It's another great sort of example of what painting over black does to a figure. So I think that's pretty much all for now. Please kind of forgive any background noise you hear. The neighbors are building a deck. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start out by working on the pants here. Now, depending on the uniform you're doing, these could also be the sort of same dark green as the uniform. But I noticed that in particular a lot of officers preferred a gray pan and that's what I'm going to be doing here. So I'm base coating the pants with Vallejo dark blue gray. I'm then going to apply a wash of Nuln Oil. Not too heavy but nice and even and uniform if possible here. Now I'm going to begin highlighting the pants. My first layer here is going to be a mixture of the dark blue gray with some uh, neutral gray to lighten it up somewhat. Um, this first stage blending is, as always with these first stages on uh, most things, going to want to go most places, um, only leave the base color in areas where you want really dark folds or shadows. Everywhere else you should put at least a light coat of this color. If you think you're going to have a dark shadow there but don't really want super dark, you can also sort of blend it over that or apply an extra light coat. And you can then go back in again and apply the same color again on areas that you expect to get highlighted higher in the future and you know are going to end up bright. My next layer is going to just continue in the same way, but now I'm just using mostly neutral gray. There's a little bit of the blue gray in there, but mostly neutral gray. Uh, you can see now I'm really starting to focus in on highlighting areas that are going to be lighter, like the knees. In this case, because there's a lot of sort of very soft, uh, kind of very unwell defined wrinkles on these pants, you're going to probably have to do quite a bit of blending to get a nice result, particularly in the front of the pants. I found myself having to do a lot of that kind of work just to get things looking good. And it, it does make some difference that we're painting over black here. You would think with gray it wouldn't so much, but you probably are going to find yourself having to maybe put on more layers of, of colors, even these darker colors, to, you know, just to get sufficient coverage. So again, you can see I'm going to go over uh, some areas a couple times here and just build up the color kind of gradually on those areas where there should be more highlights. 
And then for this next layer, I have mixed a little bit of the um, sky gray into my neutral gray, and I'm just continuing again with getting the pans brighter and lighter. This, I found, especially when I was painting these grays, that the color that went on right after you applied the paint was a little bit deceptive. It looks a lot lighter here, what you see me putting down, than how it dries in a little bit. You'll notice when we come back to it after it's had some time to sort of set, then the color's going to darken substantially. So that's something you really want to keep in mind when you're working with these sort of medium grays. That the, the, the application color is really um, going to be quite a bit different than how it's going to end up. So you may even want to do some tests just to see, you know, what you're going to be ending up with once the paint dries up. My final layer on the pans here has a really substantial amount of sky gray in it, so it's quite light. Um, I'm going to be applying this very thinly to highlight areas just where I want the absolute br brightest brights. And you're going to be seeing me also putting a lot along the edges of sharp creases and seams in those pans because, of course, those areas always really will need to be emphasized a lot with your lightest gray color. And depending on the how watered down this paint is, you can get a different effect. So uh, at first I start with it pretty thin down and then use it on the places like the knees and things like that, which I want highlighted, but I want to be sort of transparently highlighted. And then you kind of work with the fact that, of course, as you paint, your paint on the palette's gonna start drying out. And as it dries out, it's gonna thicken, it's gonna get more concentrated. And at that point, I'm gonna start working the slightly thicker, more concentrated paint onto areas where I want that really extreme gray. So along those sharp creases and seams, and then I'm going to get a really strong light gray sort of all at once, which is exactly what you want on those very sort of sharp areas. Now these particular pans were very clearly sculpted with cuffs, and these cuffs would have been made out of a leather material. Um, what is not sculpted, but what I saw in a lot of example pictures of similar pants, it was that there was also a leather sort of lining on the inside of the legs with sort of an interesting scalloped uh, detail. This type of pant is typically something you'd see on cavalry, but for whatever reason the 95th Rifles or some of these light infantry divisions seem to like to wear them as well. Um, I'm going to be base coating all of these areas here using German camouflage black brown. I'm going to start out just by painting the cuffs and then just doing sort of inside the leg sort of a stripe. Then I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I've got a double zero here and I'm going to use that to very um, carefully paint the sort of small triangular decoration that runs along the edge of the sort of inside uh, leather pieces on the legs. Now I'm going to start highlighting the leather. I'm starting out here with a layer of chocolate brown. This paint is fairly transparent. It's not very well mixed in this case, but I'm going to be applying it here. You can see mostly on the outside of the legs and sort of blending it out so it stays nice and dark on the inside. You're hardly going to see that, so you don't have to worry about painting it too much. And I'm going to build it up a little bit at the edges so that it's the the, pan, the cuffs will look a little darker in the middle. And then with those um, sort of triangular pieces, you can see I'm going to be painting the centers of all of them. Again, I'm using the really small brush just so I have better control over what I'm doing. I'm now mix some beige brown into my chocolate brown. I'm going to start highlighting it. I've taken that color and you can see I'm applying it sort of along the edges of the leather cuffs and sort of blending it inwards. This is a lot like what I do with when I'm painting leather using my sort of more normal triad. I always apply the lighter colors at the edge and sort of blend inwards so you have a more dark center. And on the cuffs, I'm going to be doing it or the cuffs, I should say, on those inner uh, leg pieces. I'm going to be doing it similarly. What I'm going to be doing is focusing the light color towards the tops of those triangles and blending it downwards, and that will kind of give sort of a more 3D highlighted effect. Um, after I have finished with that layer, I'm then going to go back in here now with pure beige brown and just layer it on again, and same deal. It's going along the cuffs, as you can see and just thinner, more delicate sort of stripes, which I am going to then again blend sort of 
downwards and into the middle. And on the triangles now, I'm really just applying sort of a light stripe, sort of the top edge of the triangle, blending it down a little bit. And you'll get a really, really, if you do this well, you'll get a really nice 3D effect on the triangles, especially because you've got that really dark base. Um, you can even go further if you want. I think I ended up mixing just a little white into the beige brown at the end just to get a really light brown so I could get a really high contrast color, which I use as a real extreme edge highlight, just just to really get a really sharp, nice edge around just this very dividing line of the cuffs and at the very tops of those triangles. Next, I'm going to work on painting the uniform jacket. Now, this would have been a very dark green. As a matter of fact, in photographs, it often comes out as almost black, but it's not. It is green. Um, so my base coat here is a mixture of black with just a hint of black green. And at this stage, we want it to be really almost black, and we're going to highlight it up. Um, we're going to really emphasize the green more than maybe is realistic in a full-size example, but that's important because we need to get that extra contrast, especially since a lot of elements uh, joining the jacket itself are going to be black and you can f afford to be a bit generous here so don't worry if you paint over elements that are going to end up black later it's just easier to get a good green base everywhere now my first highlight at this uh, stage is going to be the black green but I've mixed black into it. So we're going to end up with basically a slightly lighter color than what we just had, but that's not saying very much because it just is such a dark green. Um, you can see I'm just going to be applying this pretty much everywhere, save for really dark creases and folds. And actually, because he's wearing this jacket and there's so much uh, braid and other th trim on his jacket, a lot of it is really not exposed to the actual fabric area that you need to paint. And then the next highlight layer is going to just be pure uh, black green. And you can see, black green is a pretty dark color, but you can see because we've been working so dark that it looks positively really light in comparison to some of those early colors. And I'm just going to be layering it on here and really starting to emphasize now sort of areas where light would be hitting, if you can believe that. So you can see the tops of the sleeves along any sort of sharp uh, creases in the fabric, uh, all that kind of thing. Though, realistically, yeah, it, it's, it's going to be kind of almost hard to see where you're working even now. And also, don't forget there is a feather plume on this hat, and this would be painted in the same sort of black green tones as the jacket. Now I do want to get one more just slight highlight in here. So I've taken some deep green and mixed it into my black green. And I'm going to be applying this very sparingly because this really has to stay abnormally dark. And if you put too much of the deep green, it is actually going to make it too bright. So you have to be very careful here. You can see I'm using this highlight really only very in very small areas and blending it out quite a lot just to make sure that really sort of areas where there's a lot of light really get that extra treatment and this probably what you're seeing here I mean as I said this is going to be higher contrast more green than you would see I think in an actual example of this coat if somebody was wearing it this fabric really absorbs light from what I've seen but I really feel at this scale that you need to exaggerate it a little bit just you know you know just to get a good effect if, if you went for the full-on uh, black green color. It would be so dark that I don't think it would stand out very well compared to all the black trim and edging. And speaking of black, that's going to be our next step. <clears throat> Everything that's black on this uniform needs to be base coated, and that's a heck of a lot in this case. So, I mean, there's the usual things like the leather boots and the um, scabbard, the belts, that's all the usual stuff, the hat of course, that's, I mean you expect that to be black, but on this particular uniform, all of the trim, all the piping, all the braiding was sort of a black color, it was just, it's just a very, very dark uniform overall. So all of those areas need to get a base coat. And, and, and the officers are actually in some ways darker colored than just the normal sort of enlisted guys in these units. The enlisted guys at least would have a, a small band of white piping um, around their collars and sleeves, but the officers don't even have that. The piping on the officers is just black as well. So they're just really a very, very dark unit. 
I'm not going to start highlighting the black in the way that I start always start highlighting black areas on pretty much all figures. So I've taken here German gray, and I'm just going to be applying it most everywhere and I say most everywhere because obviously any sort of dividing lines or seams between pieces need to keep that black color so that means for example all that piping and braiding on the jacket you need to make sure you uh, don't apply this color down in between all of the different braiding pieces and, that, and that's also going to be true on his hat there's a lot of trim and a lot of cording and stuff and you want to make sure you apply this color along those but not down in between them if they're separate pieces and that you, you just make sure you want to make sure you keep the black almost as an outline color to just preserve those different pieces so you don't have to worry very much about blending or anything like that here, but you do have to make sure that you keep all the different black elements distinct from each other. And that's especially important because many of them are sort of abutting each other and you need to make sure that it, so that makes it even more crucial that you keep a dark line there so that you can really define that they're separate areas from one another. Now, in terms of highlighting the black further, I'm going to sort of start breaking things down here because there's so much black on here. I want to make sure that different elements get highlighted slightly different with slightly different color tones just to make the overall model more interesting and to make sure there's more sort of distinctiveness between different parts so it doesn't just look like one thing that's all the same. And, you know, it's very easy to get that if you're not careful because there's so much black here next to each other. So the braiding, the piping, uh, sort of the more fabricy areas of the uniform, I'm going to be highlighting using a more blue-gray color. So my first, uh, you know, sort of step in that here has been to add some Luftwaffe uniform um, blue into my German gray as a first highlight. And you can see now that I'm working that over all the different piping and braiding areas and also on the hat. And I'm going to be kind of blending it out there because that's a large surface. And also, of course, on the cuffs and the collar and the piping around those areas. Now I'm going to continue highlighting. And to do that, I have now mixed some neutral gray into that Luftwaffe uniform and German gray I've got already, just to lighten it up. And um, I'm going to start, again, just going back over all of those areas, just and starting to more emphasize the fine edges. So you can see I'm doing a lot of edge highlighting here, and I'm focusing on these lighter colors, particularly on the braiding, the piping, the cuffs, and the, and the various cording and the more large open areas like those cuffs and collar, I'm not going to apply these light colors quite so much. And you may think, ew, this is a really light color for something that's essentially black. And that's true, but at the same time, I think it, it's really necessary here really to go lighter than you might otherwise. But it, it, I think it ends up working anyway, even though it doesn't maybe seem logical just because, you know, it just... I don't know. I don't know how to explain it better than to say that it, it works well when it's sort of relative to sort of the other colors that you're going to be doing. And I continue lightening this further. So I take some um, sky gray and even some pale blue to continue lightening this color. So, you know, I'm actually working with a pretty light gray now at this point. And you can see I'm using it to pick out all the separate areas in the braiding and I'm sort of running particularly along the top where I think light would really be striking it and I think one reason I can get away with this a little bit more especially on these fine braids and piping bits is because even though these areas are black uh, given the materials that they would have been made of and the, the way they're going to interact with the light they're going to appear shinier and glossier a little bit more reflective so these sort of more extreme light gray colors still end up feeling uh, reasonable and logical, I think, uh, when used in this way. And it, 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 the important thing, though, is to, again, make sure you maintain a really dark black um, dividing line in between any of these areas and the other parts of the uniform. That's absolutely crucial. You keep those stark contrasts here because that's, that's what really makes this work and makes it believable. The other black areas I'm going to handle differently. I'm going to make them a little warmer, um, a little browner. So the leather areas, basically, which include his shoes, his scabbard, his belts, um, his hat, actually. 
those are all going to get a little bit of a warmer treatment. So I take first as a highlight color, a mix of the German gray, lightened with a bit of neutral gray, and then with some chocolate brown mixed into it. That will warm it up ever so slightly, give it a more sort of leathery look. And you can see this first layer I'm going to apply pretty generously as I often do here. And, but I'm going to blend it out considerably so that, you know, you, you, it's still fairly transparent. You're still going to get that German, just German and gray and black base layer. After that, I'm then going to just move up to pure neutral gray, but again with a good dose of chocolate brown in it to keep it warm. And I'm just going to continue sort of the same highlighting process that I just started. Uh, and again, just applying it in smaller areas, uh, just kind of more as an edging color and blending it sort of inward so it's lightest at the edges and, you know, uh, darker as you go in. And, and then I'm going to finish up basically by mixing some sky gray in to get a very light gray color. Still adding chocolate brown. You have to keep adding the chocolate brown, by the way, because otherwise it's going to the, the gray will overwhelm that brown cast, and you're going to lose it. So you you have to keep kind of refreshing your color with more brown every time you add gray into your mixture. Just around uh, this guy's neck. You can see just a bit of his sort of undershirt and sort of rough peeking out and those would be white and it's a small bit but it's, I think it's really crucial because this uniform is overall so black and so dark that this little hint of white I think is really important to sort of balancing everything out. So I'm just base coating this area now first with uh, sky gray and because the base coat was so dark you're gonna have to put quite a few layers on just to get good coverage. And then after that's on, I'm going to take pure white and layer that on, uh, building it up to get um, sufficient highlights on sort of the sort of more upper areas that have really been exposed to light. These officers also wear a red sash, but you can barely see it on this figure. But that small area that you do see, I'm going to first base coat here with Vallejo Black Red. And then I'm going to go ahead and take Mephiston Red and apply a sort of a quick first highlight. And then finish up with a final really bright highlight along the edges of Evil Sun Scarlet. Now I'm going to get that fur trim on the officer's jacket. Now I've actually seen these jackets quite a bit in pictures with a black fur trim. And I... I it just felt like too much. You can do that if you want to. It's perfectly historically accurate, but there's so much black on this uniform already. I really desperately wanted to work another color in there just to keep, you know, get a little bit more balance going. And I have seen example pictures where the fur trim was brown. So that's what I'm going to be using here. So to start out with, I'm just going to be base coating all of the fur areas with chocolate brown. Uh, once that's dry completely, I'm then going to take a Nuln oil wash and I'm going to apply that all over the fur fairly heavily and that's really going to penetrate down in all of the sort of sculpted uh, sort of recesses in the fur and really help add some extra contrast to this whole thing. Once that wash is dry, I'm going to highlight it a bit more. I'm going to first take a mixture of the chocolate brown with a little bit of beige brown in it, and I'm going to sort of lightly overbrush the fur trim with this color, especially any areas where more light is hitting. You can see sort of areas that would be shadowed. I'm not going to be putting this color. And I'm going to keep sort of a lightening the fur a little bit more. So once this is um, on, I'm going to take just some pure beige brown again and repeat the process just to lighten it up even more where I think it's necessary. And then finally, I want to get one more really high highlight by mixing some Iraqi sand into that beige brown and that I'm going to apply a lot more sparingly light, but again, just sort of over brushing the fur to get a nice highlight. Now, when I'm done, the colors look a little bit like the leather trim, but not exactly, and that's because we put that black wash in there, but the one effect of the overbrushing you get on sort of a rough surface like this particularly is that the look is a little bit dusty. It's not exactly as bad as dry brushing, but it's a little bit there. And so I'm going to correct that problem by applying an Agrex Earthshade wash to it. Uh, if you end up getting sort of these more dusty looks from over brushing or dry brushing a wash is a great way to fix that problem it unifies everything a little bit uh, sort of smooths it out and will get rid of that dusty effect 
Now it's finally time to start working on the metal areas of the figure, which in this case are going to include his sword, some hardware on his scabbard, a few little um, hooks and things like that, and most importantly, his buttons. These were a really nice shiny silver color, and there are a lot of them on his jacket. I have uh, prepared a base coat here that's a mixture of German gray with a little bit of Leo Air steel in it, and I'm just going to be using that to base coat all of the metal areas as best as I can here. You can see I painted the scabbard with two large metal areas and a black sort of leather area in the middle. There's different ways you could do this. You could do the whole scabbard in metal or sort of just have the hooks and metal. There's different things you can do in the rest in leather, but this is how I went with it. So anyway, after I've got that base coat on, I'm then going to take and mix some more Vallejo Air uh, um, gunmetal into the uh, base that I have, and I'm going to use that to apply another highlight to particularly the sword blade and the scabbard pieces because those are large areas so they need more subtle highlighting and they need to get a few more coats and when you're working with small areas this isn't necessary but it is with these bigger pieces and then i'm going to finally go ahead and take just pure vallejo air gun metal and apply that again as another highlight layer on those metal pieces of the scabbard and the sword you know really sort of blending it out nicely now finally we want to make sure we get our uh, steel areas nice and blingy so I'm taking Vallejo Air Steel here and I'm applying as a final highlight. It's quite bright so in large areas like the scabbard particularly I'm gonna to, you're going to want to apply it quite lightly and blend it out so it's somewhat transparent at least. And on the sword you can see I'm going to emphasize the cutting edge of the blade here and really not put very much on the rest of the sword area or just really blend it out thinly so it's not too intense. Now. You may have noticed that on the buttons and all the really tiny areas, I didn't bother with those extra highlight levels because they don't need it. You can just go straight from the deep, dark, sort of base color to the high, bright color on all those buttons. I have, however, switched to my small brush because it's much easier to paint these teeny tiny buttons and do a neat job of it if you lose a little brush. So I'm just taking some nice thin Vallejo Air Steel and you can see I'm just dotting it on to where all those little tiny buttons are and there are a gazillion of them. So. This actually shouldn't be too hard. You just need to make sure you do a nice, neat, even job and you don't get it, um, the steel uh, paint anywhere on your braids or any of your other work because it would be a shame to spoil all that at this point with a mess of metallic paint. All right, so here's our finished light infantry officer from the 95th Rifles. This figure I found to be surprisingly easy to paint. I thought it was going to take much longer than it did. Uh, and I said surprising because for Napoleonics, you often expect them to really take a lot of time. They're usually time consuming fiddly, but this one went surprisingly well. And I think part of that was because there's relatively few colors in here and many of the colors are very dark and similar so blending them together is a lot easier and this black base coat that we used everything sort of blends back into that and the black is nice too you can see because it really helps define the separate areas a little bit and you can see that there really is a distinctly different richer color quality to this whole figure at least i hope you can see that because we use that black base coat on there uh, but I am really very happy with how this figure turned out, even though it is relatively simple. And it it's just looks very nice. The green and black and gray are a great color combination that really are striking and work very well together. And But at the same time, I think some of those little pops of color like his collar and his red sash, they're still, they're, they're really not very big deal to paint but they're I think absolutely crucial to making this whole thing work and come together you need these little variations to, to really give the you know to make it give it some character really sort of balance the whole thing if you if it had just all been nothing but green and gray it would have been I think overwhelming and those really just help it, it just helps unify it and anyway I think the hardest thing probably painting this figure, the trickiest thing you have to deal with is all of the black areas that are all next to each other and painting those well so they look like distinct uh, unit, areas of color. It doesn't get too samey and that you know you can really just see all the different parts and it you know makes sense. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, uh, share it, leave me comments of course with what you thought. 
Um, again, of course, if you want to, you know, keep up with more of my future videos, please also do subscribe to this channel and you'll get some better idea of what I'm up to every week. So that is all for now and I will see you next time.